motherhood is a beautiful journey which can hardly be expressed in words so many dreams are pierced into a thread as soon as a woman knows that she is going to be a mother there is a fear of giving birth to a new life but happiness of adding a soul to the family is amazing right but imagine if a mother is not able to concentrate on her child after birth stressed in her own life and facing postpartum depression this thought itself stirs something inside me but our guest today mrs pooja mishra from ohio is no less than an inspiration to mothers who are dealing with postpartum depression let's welcome mrs pooja hello mrs pooja thank you so much for taking out time to speak on kamsage today and also adjusting with our time schedule between india and usa um, how are you doing i am doing great akanksha thank you so much for giving me this opportunity i always wanted to help other people uh, with my own experiences and this is allowing me to do that okay uh so as you know that uh, we're going to talk about your journey today uh but before i jump directly to the postpartum depression uh which is a mix of physical emotional and behavioral changes in a woman after in a woman after giving birth uh i would also like to ask you before that that did you experience any of the depression symptoms even before the childbirth yes I experience I used to have bouts of anxiety um for prolonged time periods um even before my pregnancy and uh, the symptoms got a little worse uh, uh I used to experience palpitations and tightening of my you know head uh, sort of nerves and um pain and tightness in my upper back Okay. and um i used to cry for no reason and uh, you know my i couldn't focus on my job so it was starting to make my uh, life less and less functional and then of course uh, i was newly married at that time so i was also adjusting to the relationship we were living long distance so it was a lot of toll on my emotional <clears throat> on my emotional health and um and i uh, you know thought about what can i do about it and so uh, you know i was i was getting more and more dysfunctional okay so you had the uh, physical as well as mental symptoms that you say both of the like tightening of the head as well as the back yes yes this was i could the- actually feel that and and i knew something was wrong with me um and um you know i just it it was it was hard to ignore as something like you know oh this is just like a phase or something it it was actually becoming very very difficult to deal with okay. um on a I, regular I basis i mean you're saying that these were the symptoms you were experiencing before uh, pregnancy only so were there any specific reasons for such symptoms or uh, i mean could you realize why why it all was happening it was the long distance i mean it 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 started on its own um there was i mean i was as i said i was newly married at that time i was going through a lot of uh, you know like when you are in a relationship you you are trying to understand the other person and we were also you know living long distance so it was a lot of things that i was adjusting to and you know at work to um so it was stress from all directions uh, i think but there is no one incident that i can uh, point to okay. um and maybe it was just a phase of my life that you know i was just going through some some sort of uh, uh mental uh, tension at that time uh but it became very very medical. much uh, like medical condition very very soon yeah okay okay uh, all right so uh once these uh, things were happening with you before uh, pregnancy did you have ever thought of visiting a psychiatrist or did you think of taking any medication or something like that for the improvement 
Yeah, so uh, both me and my husband were very puzzled with my uh, symptoms, and at the same time, you know, we were we were like be- being from you know India, we were not very much like um, trying to accept it, but at the same time, we were open to explore uh, the possible solutions, and um, so we I thought of you know seeing a psychiatrist, May- maybe that would help. Uh, so I did go and see a psychiatrist and I was prescribed a medication. Um, I think the, the name of the medication was Prozac. Okay. Um, and uh, so I started taking the medication every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it did relieve my symptoms to some extent. Okay. Um, but I became, I soon found myself to be dependent on the medication. And, um, you know, I thought that that was my uh, only support system and and it did relieve my symptoms but uh, now when I look back at it I don't think it cured me from within um, so uh, it was just a temporary relief okay okay so you were saying that you went to the psychiatrist and mm-hmm. you did you take any therapies in that case or you just went for- at that time i did not think of therapies uh, i just straight away went to the to be honest i i was very little i had very little background and education in this mental health uh, area and i just thought that the only person you have to see when you have issues like this is Uh, a psychiatrist and so I called up a psychiatrist and I did not even explore different psychiatrists I just went to the one that I found and um, you know in my first visit itself I was prescribed the medication okay I hope Kamsage helps people in that case for mental health awareness that's what actually we are trying to do so that people become Mm -hmm. aware of uh, this area and try to actually help themselves in that case so uh, like coming back to the same thing like you must be very happy to know about your pregnancy then I mean you were already I know you were going through a very tough phase but when you came to know that you were pregnant I guess you were you must be very happy already but uh, then what happened that you face symptoms of uh, postpartum depression even after the childbirth or maybe let's say what were those symptoms and uh, yeah and did you even consider again to go back to the psychiatrist once the childbirth was done right so while i all this was going on um and you know i was trying to cure myself um i suddenly found out that i was pregnant Mm -hmm. and um this was within a year of me getting married so we were really not planning for a child and we were also not living in the same city so we were very much like surprised uh it was a good surprise Mm -hmm. and uh you know my first reaction was a very happy reaction um but as soon as i went to the gynecologist to get myself checked the one thing that she told me is that you know you need to either reduce your dose okay. of the anti-anxiety medication or you know she did not actually say that you should get off the medication she actually said you should you need to consult your psychiatrist and mm-hmm. and adjust your dose okay. but i felt a sense of responsibility towards my child mm-hmm. and without even consulting the psychiatrist or anything i just stop the medication mm. and this also i think uh, is was associated with you know the stigma that you know we all are brought up with that mm. you know this is not a medical condition and mm. you know this is just a figment of your imagination and you can you you don't need a medication for this right so mm. i just felt that guilt inside me and i just stopped the medication right away okay and uh you know obviously it must have because i wasn't cured completely and because i anyway was not feeling full completely uh it actually backfired right after my baby was born okay. um and that was coupled with the fact that you know we all our friend circle at that time mm. uh, did not 
uh, have like we're not going through this phase of life of having children and all of that so i felt very isolated were you comparing um, you know, yourself to your friends circle I yeah mean. i was comparing myself to our friends and you know i always uh, because we hardly got a chance to travel together and mm-hmm. you know have a lot of like time together just by ourselves right which mm-hmm. um, a lot of couples did they they spent a few years together before having their first child mm-hmm. and we had our first child within uh, actually mm-hmm. right after we completed our one year anniversary so we hardly got a chance to do all the things newly wed people do right. and i felt very um, isolated and i i felt like i was uh, you know uh, round the clock i was uh, taking care of this baby who did not even respond to my emotions and i did not know that newborns actually don't have any emotions okay. so even that was a news to me and and all of these factors you know together with my past history with anxiety and depression mm. um i just uh, went back to it right away okay. um and i you know i couldn't enjoy uh, the motherhood at that time um okay. as i would have wished to okay okay so i mean uh, as you saying that you started experiencing the similar kind of symptoms that you had earlier again the soreness in the back and the headache the tightness mm-hmm. and again the cloudy uh, mind you were having those symptoms back again right right i i started to have those episodes of crying without any reason and um just not being happy with with my motherhood and in spite of you know all my friends and family including my husband telling me again and again that you should be really happy and that actually made me even more sad because people were expecting me to be happy right uh, right and uh, you know it was like a lot of pressure to be happy suddenly right okay, okay. um which i i did not genuinely feel uh so it was getting worse and worse and uh, you know um i again sought for medical attention i went to my physician Mm-hmm. um and i said hey can you prescribe me a therapist and you know i then started to see a therapist okay uh but of course the therapist was culturally from a different background okay uh so she couldn't really relate with my life history and my um thought process right okay. uh so it wasn't really working for me i i was doing it just because i needed someone to openly talk to right. uh but again like i did not get much help from that so therapy did you consider changing your therapist in that case if you were not able to align with her i um i did not really change my i mean i i thought about it uh probably i even discontinued going for a while uh mm-hmm. I, it, it's hard to recall now but i think what what was happening was you know i was doing it and and it wasn't working for me so i got disinterested in the process and and i i actually stopped going um for some time but again like i did not cure myself i did not find myself to be completely cured so um i again you know sort of sought help with my physician and this time my physician was a indian physician she was a um you know middle aged lady um with the indian background and she basically uh i i asked her for a reference of a therapist again mm-hmm. and she said uh you know there are ways in which you can actually cure yourself mm-hmm. and that was sort of a new opening for me a mm-hmm. uh, realization for me mm-hmm. um what did what so was that, that magical thing that she told you that was the new way for yeah, you yeah it was it was a very uh, magical moment in my life mm-hmm. um i didn't realize it at that time but looking back it was um she actually asked me to uh, consider uh, pranayam and meditation practices okay um by art of living 
okay and at first i was completely i completely rejected the idea hmm. um because i uh, i did not believe in it hmm. and so i just came back from her office and i i, I went on with my business but then you know she actually called me back which is very unusual for a physician to call call the patient back okay and uh, this is the actual magical moment she said puja either you will take this step forward mm. and make your life better for for good mm-hmm. or you will just continue on the path that you are okay and i thought that was a you know wake up call okay and uh, i told my husband about it and he he again like supported me and he said you know you can give it a shot mm-hmm. uh, and see if it works for you okay. and i signed up for the basic art of living uh, happiness program um, okay. and uh, that was the beginning of a, a new life for me actually okay and this is also nice that your husband was also pretty much supportive in that case that you know you should go and give it a shot yeah. so your social and your surrounding support is also pretty important for the recovery process yes i think for for him it was a new territory as well and for me too and and we both sort of treaded on it uh, just believing in you know our gut feeling and we did what what we could do to to help cure it hmm. um so i i had a very very interesting experience when i went for the art of living class i went as a complete non believer and you know i i just uh did what they were asking me to do but when i when i actually performed the sudarshan kriya for the first time mm-hmm. um i had I had a complete op- my 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 entire self actually opened up and you know i i experienced extreme emotions at that time and and i felt like from then on you know i i started on my path to recovery for good um okay so for how long did you uh, take this practice continue and i mean where did you sign this up how was it for you what were the things that were you that you used to perform or take part in the activities over there yeah so i um i actually did the sudarshan kriya very religiously for a month and a half okay or maybe two months um and i did it just like i would take a medication right i mm-hmm. just i found time for it i did not i accommodated in my schedule it was very difficult at that time i used to um you know work uh, long hours and all of that but in spite of all that i found time to do my kriya in the morning for mm-hmm. 30 minutes okay and i really noticed tremendous changes uh in me and the external world was still the same you okay. know my job was very demanding i had to really balance my work life and my family life because i had a little kid mm. a toddler in the house mm. um so all of that in, was didn't change the external factors didn't change but i did find a big change in me mm. uh in terms of how i was reacting to it um right. i was not reacting to it um with anxiety or stress i i had my space of peace and i was my reaction was much more constructive uh, once i started to do the kriya and i became much more of a calm person um, yeah. in, and you started inside. seeing everything in a very calm manner mm-hmm. right right okay but the, uh, were you also taking any kind of medications along with the same sudarshan kriya no i uh, i had stopped medication uh at the time of my uh, pregnancy and i did not uh, go back to it okay uh, i just started to find other avenues mm-hmm. um because my my you know main uh, i think philosophy is that medications only cure your temporary symptoms 
and they make you dependent on them okay. uh, whereas uh, these alternate techniques even though are very hard and and you know very like difficult to execute in the beginning mm-hmm. uh, they actually cure you from within and um, and give you that strength in yourself so you are not dependent on anything external okay okay so you saying for a long term relief uh, it's always good to find a peace deep inside you only and which could be achieved through the means of spirituality or uh, pranayam or kriyas that you tried yes but at the same time i will uh, add a caveat to that that you know everybody's case is very different and you know it depends on the level of your symptoms the seriousness of your symptoms so i definitely would recommend seeking medical help uh they they should actually go hand in hand um your own practices of pranayam and meditation should go hand in hand with your uh, medical uh treatment Okay. Okay. So you're saying like both the things have to be keep kept in a balance. It's going taking a medical help is also necessary, as well as uh, making lifestyle changes is also a important part of the process recovery process. Yes. Yes. Uh, your goal should be to to hopefully not be dependent on the medication for too long, mm-hmm. um, and try to find the peace within you. Um, but definitely in the beginning you do need uh, the help of medication as well okay that's nice so now your kid must be happy when you are already so well calm peaceful right now yes so i you know over time my uh, relationship with my child uh, got really better and um i will also thank my parents and uh, my in-laws uh, who actually supported with uh, raising the child mm-hmm. um without their help i would be completely alone um, in handling this and so yeah with the support of the family and my husband and um you know my own uh, struggle with this i i was able to conquer this uh issue in my life but uh what that taught me is that it's not something that can be just brushed off as a you know pigment of imagination you cannot reject medical and mental illnesses just as your you know as we say like it's a pigment of imagination or mm. or you know we need that awareness in the society um and the stigma that is attached to uh, the mental illnesses should really uh, be removed right right okay so i'm glad you actually recovered uh, so peacefully from this tough journey that you had already uh, so i mean for the sake of it uh, would you like to give any message to our viewers with your with the learnings with the journey that you had with any message for us yeah i i would say that uh, find your support system um and don't ignore the symptoms um as you know something that will go away on its own mm-hmm. um so find your support system and do make changes in your lifestyle um because otherwise it's just by medication and just by going to see the doctor uh, you will not find a long term cure for it right um and otherwise it will just become you know one medication after the other and and you will find yourself more and more weak from inside mm-hmm. so i would recommend that uh along with seeing the doctor and getting yourself Uh, a support system is very important the mm-hmm. so support of your family mm-hmm. or friends um you know uh, and do you think important. one should also keep all these things in their lives like uh, keeping the support system engaging in meditation exercising in their everyday life as well so that even if they are facing any kind of mental health challenge probably in their later stages of life they are able to cope up with them in a better manner 
right yes yes i think of uh, even for a normal uh, human being like who has no medical uh, condition hmm. uh, all of these things are really important having a healthy social life um, with a good friend circle hmm. um, having a supportive family hmm. and at the same time you know doing pranayam and meditation as a regular practice is hmm. is i think it can do wonders if you, even if you have no medical symptoms Um, okay. maybe in your it case even more it was a little tip, it became a little uh, difficult because of the same thing of the marriage a sudden change probably then yes. a long distance because of cities were different for you and your spouse and uh, yes the stress the stress was already going there of the everything changes yeah that this i i got the wake up call pretty late you can say um mm-hmm. but i hope that with more and more awareness uh we will try to find the cure sooner uh for our issues uh, or even without the issues you know i i really think that we should all lead a life which has all these elements of spirituality as well as um mm-hmm. support system of the family okay Okay. Uh, all right, Pooja ji. So I think it was a wonderful session with you because I mean we got yes. so much uh, knowledge in one go that how to deal with depression, what is postpartum depression, and I know I, as I already said that motherhood is a beautiful uh, thing to experience. But if such problems start emerging in life of a woman, then it's always 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 recommended to go to a therapist and go to a psychiatrist and keep uh, imbibing spirituality inside you for a better recovery process and will it take care of your child at the same time yes <laughs> okay thank please. you so much for giving me this opportunity akansha and uh, you, hopefully you know we will uh, we will spread this awareness yeah further and further okay right. Thank you ma'am. I hope that this talk show must have enlightened many of our viewers who often forget to keep a check on their mental health and dive into anxious states without even asking for help. With that, I would also like each and every one of you to like, share and subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook and YouTube channel to keep positivity flowing with it. Thank you.